so they had to put they put a bucket out on uh, at the door of the gigs on each night with a note just saying if you'd like the dam to go home give us some money and we'll go uh, it's the damned and that's neat 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 and here's someone who to my knowledge has never been chased out of a country i think that's fair to say isn't it shirley manson hello you might possibly think that but i couldn't <laughs> comment how are you how are you keeping i'm tip top thank you for asking um here's, here's something that some people may have missed or might not know uh the other year i think it was last year you received the enemy award for icon of the year i did i, I well, Don't look so aghast, I, Steve. No, I, I, but I'm just... I mean, obviously I was <laughs> He's terrific, literally speechless. I was, well, I, I was terrifically excited to see it because <laughs> I was at the first Enemy Awards, the very first year that it happened. Um, we covered it for the evening session. And the icon of the year that year was John Peel. And I remember John coming in and uh, I said to him, John, how does, how does an icon walk? And he said, uh, well, if you... Uh, just watch me when I leave the truck, then you'll see. <laughs> but you're, oh, you're, not, you're now an icon. How does that feel? I've always been an icon, Steve. <laughs> and In how, my own mind. <laughs> and how, how, is, how, is, how is Austin? How are you finding Austin I and find South by quite, Southwest? Well, usually I find Austin fantastic, but I have to say this time it's so mental that you can't walk anywhere without nearly losing your life at the, at the sort of heels of these bizarre little scooters that are all running oh, around. Yeah, we them. talked about this yesterday. Scooter, you can hire a scooter uh, just to whiz up and down the street. But there's scooters they're everywhere. They're everywhere. They're on the pavement. They're on the street. They're in people's gardens. They're tossed into garbage bins. It's frightening. Yeah. How was... Um, I mean, I don't know... Uh, I mean, I guess even now, where, where are the places in America where garbage do really well? Where do you enjoy playing in the States? Uh, I mean, to be fair, we sort of do the same everywhere i mean we've been really lucky that way we're not huge anywhere but we're not we can play a gig if pretty much anywhere at this point but i don't know i don't think in these terms anymore <laughs> I, don't, I don't i really don't think like that so i've no idea really have you ever done um red rocks in denver no i want no, to but oh, no we would, never have that's a great that's my that's, dream yeah that's a great place yeah, I've heard it's all incredible. The venue, yeah you're making me feel really been. inadequate so. oh i'm sorry i, I bless well <laughs> here's Here's something, because you were invited, to, uh, one of the reasons you're here in Austin is uh, you were invited to be one of the keynote speakers uh, at uh, this year's South by Southwest, which, well, you should explain, actually, what uh, the panel was all about. Well, the panel I did with Laura Mabry from Churches, um, and it was really just to have women talking about what their experiences have been like in the music industry that's still pretty much a, a male-dominated industry. So... Um, as you can imagine, Lauren and I had quite a few things to say about inclusivity and diversity. And um, yeah, I was honoured to be asked. Yeah. And how do you feel it has changed? Has anything it hasn't changed? Changed yet? I think, but right. I, I feel it will. I feel like things are really starting to change, and I think young women are are much more uh, determined to change the status quo. You know, they, I, I think that's been one of the great things that, about the galvanisation of women through social media. So I have great hopes for women in the future and getting more and more invested in the music industry, which is still, I think it's only like 16% of women are involved in recording music. And I mean, that's just insane, you know. Mm. And what was, the, what was the reaction? I mean, what was the audience like and what, what response did you get from them? Uh, you know, to be honest, I was quite nervous. I wasn't really paying attention to the audience. I was yeah, well, just trying they, to keep my words together. They are strange things because you're sat there in front of a room yeah, of Yeah, you know that delegates. better than anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of young women there, obviously, but there was a whole mixture of people. And, yeah, it was... I, 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 we didn't get booed off stage. Let's leave it at that. Do you think, though, that there is, there is some sort of momentum beginning to build? There is a desire for change, though, in the industry, I think. I do think there is a desire for change. And I think even men at this point are looking forward to some kind of change, too. You know, I think the status quo is so s stiff. <laughs> Excuse, that's a yeah. terrible pun. Um, but it, it needs to change and it needs to be rethought. And, and so, yeah, I think changes are coming, whether we all like it or not. Because we, um, we had Amanda Palmer on the show yesterday. Amanda, she's uh, a firecracker. Yeah, absolutely. And, but she was saying, I mean, one of the, one of the quotes which I read, which um, Amanda, Amanda talking about her new album, was saying, um, and I think the quote is something like, the way the dominoes are falling, there's never been a better time to be honest and open and try and move things forward. Yeah, I mean, I think any time is a good time to try and move things forward. So um, whether it will be a good time is yet to be seen. I mean, there was a lot of momentum behind, you know, the Me Too movement and a lot of discourse about, about how women are treated in society. 
Um, I haven't really seen too many tangible changes yet. That's not to say there won't be. But I think we have to get really serious about how we start looking at the future. And it, well, this is a very serious interview for the BBC, well, Steve. Well, I mean, but it's, <laughs> I mean, these are the input. I mean, these are. These are some of the issues which have been debated this week. I mean, yeah. we come here and um, there's a lot of hot air, isn't there? I mean, there's a, well, there's a hundred uh, or more panels every day, probably. And it is just trying to come away thinking that actually things might change rather than it just being a week where people pay lip service to things that they think should happen. Well, there's that too. I mean, that, that's the problem. I mean, certainly, you know, as, as someone who considers herself a feminist... I keep saying to young women, you know, feminism isn't about wearing a pink T-shirt and, and some slogan on your chest, you know. There has to be a form of, some form of activism involved. Now, whether that's, whether you get another woman involved, on, on, you know, in, in your business or you hire them or you, in, you encourage them, mentor them. I don't know, there's a million and one ways you can encourage other women, but um, you have to be active. You can't just sit there and wear a pussy power shirt. And garbage you were saying just before we came on air are doing a few gigs again we are in the summer um i believe we're coming to london oh yeah yes are you coming back? we're coming to play kew gardens which seems incredibly posh to me so i'm excited you know we're really lucky well it'd be lovely to uh, see you you've picked a track for us um, by mia mm. why why this particular tune well because i was asked to pick a song that had something to do had some relevancy to why i'm here this week and and i think this is a fantastic anthem for women breaking the constraint the constructs and the constraints of of what is expected of them so in you know and 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 just breaking out and and uh not conforming and that that's why and plus i love mia and um, one last thing before uh, we let you go. Well, so where are you living now? Where do you have to go back to now you've been to Austin? I'm going back to Los Angeles. You li do you live in LA? I do. I, I actually live in Hollywood, which is even more of a cliche. Oh, do you? Mm. Do you really? It's very violent and quite scary. <laughs> <laughs> it's not in the least bit glamorous. <laughs> it's not like Socky Hall Street on a Saturday night, though. It, well, I don't know about that. <laughs> so on some nights, it can be a lot worse than Socky Hall Street, I can assure you. Shirley Manson, thank you so much for Steve coming Lamar, to see us. Thank you. And this is MIA on Six Music and this is Bad Girls. <laughs>